duct tape is as good as a bandage. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my second and the looks like my series that I'm going to do. I'm going to use a wild olive piece of wood that I've got that's got a little bit of waves and cracks and uh, holes and everything like that and I'm going to put it to use. So let's go and have fun, some fun and don't forget subscribe if you like it and also of course comment at the bottom and like it. Created a tenant, turn it around. I'm using today on this project tools from Blackline tools. I got some more of them. I got the round one and the V one, like the tri triangle one, and the um, gooseneck and a square one. The square one and the V one I got from them as a present with the handle. So thank you very much for the present. They are not sponsoring me. The rest of the stuff I bought. So whatever you hear, what I'm saying is because I like it and because I bought it. So let's go creating um, a cylinder, a s just a straight cylinder I'm using on this one with a round carbide. And uh, I'm trying to get to a level cylinder. You'll see a lot of holes over there. I'm going to use them a little bit later. And now I'm going to create the, the shape that I want to do. I'm going to do in the middle a big wide um, gap. And you'll see just now why. And this project, many things went wrong, uh, but I fought it and I repaired it and I made it. Um, I'll tell you all about it during the video. Um, you will see also what I'm saying. Now freehand, I'm going to create like pieces that are missing in the wood and I'm going to take them out. I'm going to actually use uh, my uh, router and I'm going to route them out um, and using the holes that came with the with the wood, I'm going to use them also. Just in the end, but really, really in the end, I'm going to use it without a guard. I'm going to do some hand, a freehand without a guard, just to clean the edges and the corners. Uh, I usually use the guard all the time, but there are places that you can't use it when the guard, like here, I can't use it if the guard is in. So I'm just going to clean a little bit very light, very careful, um, and very light. If you're not very good with a router, please don't try to do it. Um, I do, I've got many hours of working with a router, so I can afford doing it. Now, I'm going to use a normal, um, drain pipe that we have, that's the size that we've got in South Africa and I'm going to use it as my vessel. Uh, it's something that I lost in, in, in also in the video that it was two pores. This is the first one that I'm doing. Um, because it's quite a lot of resin and I was worried that it's going to get overheated and it will crack. So that's my first one that I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the pressure pot for about three to four hours. And then, and that's the part that uh, I don't know what happened to the video. Um, the second pour, it, I don't know what happened to that. So there is two pours. So after four hours, I've done the second pour just to be sure that I don't overheat the resin and it will crack. By the way, before I put the resin in, I use something called mold release. That's the one that you use for silicone molding and I spread it inside. So maybe the, um, it will come out easier um, from, the, from, the, from, the, um, from the pipe. And it did. It came out quite, quite, quite easy. Slide that out very nice. The tenant wasn't uh, covered by the, um, by the resin, so I can use the same tenant. And I'm also using the same, um, the same uh, mark for the center. So whatever I'm taking off now, I'm going back to the original square of the wood. And now I'm using the round carbine tool. Um, that's the um, black line one. And um, so far it works very nice. I'm actually very, very happy with it. It takes off, it doesn't, 
it, there is no gap between the wood, the hard uh, um, olive wood, and the resin that is softer. So, and that's what I like about it. Um, and and if you look at it, it takes out very nice, even if it's wood, very nice lines, uh, lines on it. So I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. Um, now I'm using the. They call it V or W, and it works very much like a scraper. Uh, and if I, if you turn it in an angle, it really, really, is. it's like scraping it very, very thin, and it brings it almost to uh, the line that you don't need to use um, uh, sandpaper. I actually use sandpaper, but it comes out beautiful. Now enough talking about the tools, let me explain it. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to create a shape that I want, the basic shape that I want, uh, and now I'm going to draw, uh, this is a, I think it's a 65 millimeter, no it's a 60 millimeter, and I drill it all the way to, to the end, it's not easy, this wood, even that it was a little bit of froth inside, the, the wild olive is quite a hard wood. No, I don't think it's an optic illusion. Actually, I'm using a reverse, a reverse the speed of the of the lathe, so it will be easier for me to hollow it. So because I can see what happened. The other option, of course, is because it's quite deep, is to turn the head around to the side. But I decided I prefer to do it this way. Of course, I locked it. I locked the chuck in place with the bolt, and so it doesn't come off on me. And it's very easy. I'm using the carbine, the triangle one to hollow it comes out nicely. I don't know if you noticed when I, when I was working over there, but I got myself a new toy. It's called Trend Air Shield. Um, I got it from, uh, from the UK uh, via Amazon. And it's a beautiful thing. I'm using it for polishing. I'm using it for cutting. It, it stops the, um, the dust altogether. As you can see, I left on the right side, on the right side corner, the, the second camera because I had a lot of problems with the cameras on this. I'll be very honest with you on, on this video. I had everything that could go wrong is gone wrong. Here, uh, I didn't notice that the camera angle is too high, so you don't see exactly what I'm doing. So that's why I left the, the top uh, view also. And then you will see later that I'm changing, that I'm using only the top view. Uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, I got a big road from one of my hollowing tools connected. You, you saw it in previous videos. I connected the pad to it, and now I'm going from 60. No, sorry, from 80 all the way uh, to 100 uh, to uh, 2,000 on sandpaper. No, to 1,000. Sorry, to 1,500, and I finished the inside. Now I'm doing the outside, and the reason why I want to finish the outside so I can see how much blur I've got from the inside and how much um, I need to still um, sandpaper inside. Uh, so if I have one, one basic information is that I know that I can get to a total, total beautiful clear outside, I'll, I'll know what I have to do in the inside. On the outside, I use up to 600. Then I use the pads, water pads, and um, I'm going to use now um, Novas three and two and three, and uh, that's the three already. That's the fine scratches, and after that, I'll be able to see how clear is it from the outside and how clear or not clear is from the inside. And now you can see on the side of the wood how clear is on the outside. And I made a gizmo here. I made something to put some pads on because I have to work a lot of with the pads. So with the pads, um, with water, I'm going again all the way, all four pads, uh, medium, fine, uh, extra fine, and micro fine.
Now you will see that most of the time I'm using the top camera. And the reason for that is that the main camera that I've got behind me or on the, to the side just, I don't know what happened, died on me. Um, the focus uh, locked out of focus and I could not get it back into full focus. Um, I'll have to re reboot it, resend it. I don't know what to do with it, but I'll see for the next video. So I'm still allowing it onto the corner just for you to see um, all the operation that I'm doing. Usually I'm allowing the camera to go into between, to play between the two cameras, but because the focus is out, uh, I can't use the other one. The time is for OB shine juice. I cut myself a little bit. You'll see now how did I did it like that without the tape. Uh, I put my hand inside, stupid, 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 and I scraped the skin of my hand. So I put the tape because I needed to finish the job. I could not for a, for a scratch and for a little bit loosening of uh, skin to stop this project. So that's um, uh, Obi Shine Juice for the, for the um, wood. And I had to go to the end and I couldn't use this uh, rod. So I put my hand inside and mm, you can see what happened. But uh, it's all right, it's, it's just a scratch. I put the tape, I left the tape, so if I have to put my hand inside, I'm not going to scratch it even more. And it came out quite okay. Uh, I'm just marking where I want to cut it off. And then I'm going to use my parting tool to cut it off. I'll do, I'm going to use a piece of, uh, um, that's from a bicycle, the, um, not the tube, the tube, the, the inside, yeah, the tube. And I'm going to put it on the, on the chuck, so it's not going to scratch the inside. And I'm going to drill the place for my um, logo, and I'm going to finish the bottom. I'm going to finish the bottom of the, of the cup, and um, I'm going to use a Yorkshire grid to clean it and to finish it over there. Now you will be able to see how blur comes the camera. It's, it's, it's not because it's dirty, it's out of focus. Uh, that um, Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some Yorkshire grid on the handle that I made from another piece of wild olive. Uh, I just created the handle, I cut it on the bend saw and then I filed it and now I'm going to put it back on the mug. Not back, I'm going to put it the first time on the mug. Just looking for the right place to put it on, and then I'm going to use um, uh, epoxy, uh, clear epoxy, and I'm going to put it on its place. And here it is, drinkable mug, really drinkable mug. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like my channel and to give me comments at the bottom. You liked it, you didn't like it. Cheers, enjoy your ice cold beer.